What's up guys, it's Friday and so you know what time it is. Time for What The Fitness. But first, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, follow the algorithm. So this week we have a video from Jay Shetty's podcast. It was uh, Dr. Casey Means who looks like she's a physician and she has a book out. So let's see what she has to say about eating speed. Research strongly shows that the people who eat the slowest have a four times less likelihood of developing metabolic syndrome than people who eat the fastest. So literally this has nothing to do with what you're eating. It's how you're eating. So this should be very empowering for people because it's like, even if you don't want to change the actual food, change the speed at which you're eating. And that does change everything. The key message here is that the more you can invest in sitting down at a table and eating slowly and mindfully, it's literally going to have a profound impact on your core metabolic health. Okay, so it's not the worst claim I've ever seen, but her saying strong, first off, my, my problem is with her saying strong. It's not really strong. I don't know where she got four times. The odds ratios I saw we're about 1.5 to 2.5, which is basically like two and a half times risk at the highest. Now again, that's still a pretty big increased risk, but it's really important to go into the reasons as to why this happens. Because if I was a lay person, what I might take from what she said is, oh, I don't have to eat less calories and I don't even have to change the foods I eat. If I just eat them slower, it will change my metabolic health. There's really no evidence that that's the case. If this works, it's because people eat less calories. Now, in the human randomized control trials, there are some that show reduced calorie intake for people who eat slower. There's also some that show the opposite. And in fact, the data is not as clear cut as, as she seems to make it out. In fact, it's kind of all over the place. Some show it makes a difference positively. Some show it doesn't. Some show it makes a difference negatively. We've got to be careful when we talk about strong evidence. I think there's strong evidence that smoking increases the risk of cardiovascular disease. I think there's strong evidence that smoking increases the risk of cancer. I think there's strong evidence that LDL cholesterol is an independent risk factor for cancer. I think there is strong evidence that obesity is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, for cancer. I think there's strong evidence that resistance training is good for metabolic health, cardiovascular disease, mortality. I think there's strong evidence that exercise decreases your risk of those diseases. That's what I would consider strong evidence. Studies that are kind of all over the map, but you happen to cherry pick one. And again, I, I could not find the study that she apparently is referencing about a four times increased risk. I, I could not find that. Saying something is strong based on studies that are kind of all over the map is weak, <laughs> uh, a weak move. And even then, what we call strong evidence. Strong evidence should be when you have all different converging lines of evidence that line up and say the same thing. That means there's epidemiology to support it, a mechanism to support it, animal studies to support it, and then there are human randomized control trials to support it. If all four of those are not in alignment, then we really can't call it strong evidence. And in this case, it is not strong evidence. We have to be careful about throwing around these terms because there's epidemiology, but then there's really not a whole lot of other stuff. I mean, the only viable mechanism is it decreases calorie intake. And in some studies show it does, some studies show it doesn't. So again, it's not strong evidence. Now, I agree with her that I think eating slower and more mindfully is probably beneficial for decreasing calorie intake and improving satiety, but we have to be honest about why it's good advice. And we need to really be honest about how big of a difference it makes. In some of these human randomized control trials, the best results are people eat like 100 less calories at a meal. It's like 890 instead of 8, or it's 800 instead of 890. It's a difference, but it's not a, this massive difference, okay? And again, if we're looking at epidemiology, there are confounding variables. People who eat slower might be more likely to eat lower calorie. They might be more likely to make better food choices because they're eating foods that are more satiating. They may be eating for mindfully, which means they're less likely to overeat. There's a lot of confounding variables here. So again, it's not the worst claim I've ever seen. I don't want to be too hard on her, but I would strongly disagree with her use of strong evidence. And I think we just have to be careful about how we throw around strong terms like that 
because throwing around the word strong in this case was weak. All right, guys, pick up your human randomized control t-shirt at the link in the description of the BioLane store, and I'll catch you next week.